Good afternoon, everybody. I'll let you get settled in. I'll get, get us started in just a minute. I recognize a lot of names. So welcome. Welcome back to a, oh, so many of you that I know I've met at other workshops. And welcome to anybody who's attending for the first time. All right. We'll get started in just a minute. If you'd like to, uh, while you're getting settled in, if you want to go ahead and pull up your chat, go ahead and toss a quick uh, hello. Uh, tell us where you're coming from. That would be great. And we'll get started in a second. And I'm also going to drop an attendance link into chat. Oh, I got someone from Midland. Hello, hello. Kentucky, Michigan, Canada, Ohio, North Carolina. Ooh, a couple of Canada, Indiana. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I think this is a very timely uh, workshop. Ah, Minneapolis. I'm close-ish, David, <laughs> to Minneapolis. I'm in South Dakota, the Northeast corner. So about five hours away from Minneapolis. Colorado Springs. Welcome, Denver. Hello, hello. All right. Okay, everybody get settled in. We're gonna be sharing a lot of links with you as we get going tonight. Uh, I'm trying to copy one for the attendance link and it's giving me just a bit of a problem. There we go. And Leah's probably already got it copied for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss in the attendance link into chat as we're getting started here. And please take a second to click that. You will definitely want to click the attendance link, codehs.com slash Pendleton dash attend. That is not only going to tell us that you're here, but it's also going to let us send out certificates to you afterwards. Um, so definitely click that attendance link. Again, codehs.com slash Pendleton dash attend. That is not going to collect any other information just besides that you are here. Um, and let us send that all important certificate. So definitely take a moment to do that. I'll toss that in there one more time. Probably a few more times here and there. There we go. And before we get started, I'm gonna find the link to the slide deck that we'll be using tonight. You will want this because you're gonna have all the links to Ken's sandboxes in, oops, there we go, in the slide deck. So be sure to click that attendance link. Again, codehs.com slash Pendleton-10. And then you can browse out to codehs.com slash Pendleton dash slides. I have a couple more people joining. This is an awesome crowd. Again, welcome everybody. It's great to see all of you. Like I was saying, I recognize so many names. So I am very excited that you could join us tonight. I think this is gonna be a great workshop. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Um, again, welcome. Thanks for joining us for uh, comparing and contrasting Java arrays and array lists. And I will not be leading this workshop, but we have a fabulous teacher trainer with us, uh, computer science teacher and teacher trainer, Kent Pendleton, and he'll be taking us through this. And before we get started, if you don't happen to have a CodeHS account, we did wanna just put this link out there for you. Um, so if this is your first time checking out CodeHS, um, go ahead and browse out to codehs.com slash sign up and sign up for your free educator account. Um, and that we can get you set up pretty quickly with that. Um, you won't need to enroll in any other sections tonight, but you can get started on CodeHS this way. All right. And if you are signing up for an account um, and you have any trouble, just drop a note in the chat and we can help you out with that. All right. So you've heard me talk enough. Again, I just want to say welcome. Thanks for coming. And Kent is ready to stooge around with the arrays and array list. So Kent, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay. You go. Very good. I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. First of all, I just want to say hi to everybody. It is so 
such a great privilege to be with you guys today, especially on everybody's favorite day, Tuesday. I couldn't believe getting to a seminar on a nerdy day like today. I'm so happy about this. Um, this is a presentation that I use to introduce arrays and array lists to my Java students. Keep in mind, my students have had already a year of programming prior to AP Computer Science. So they've already had a year of Python. And I don't think I'm seeing your screen oh. just yet. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, as I was saying, this is an introduction that I give to my students in our AP computer science course in Java. My students have already had a year of programming already in Python, however, so this allows me a little bit more flexibility than you might experience if you're having kids for the first time. So if you wanted to use this as an introduction, you could. If you wanted to use it as a way of summarizing things on the back end, then you could use it as well. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now, one thing that you might notice is that I've got what I'm calling starter code. I'm gonna program this myself, talking you through uh, the things that we do. Um, if you wanna follow along, you're welcome to. You've got the link in the slide deck to the starter code. So if you're, if you're intrepid, you can code yourself, but if you wanna just kind of follow along, uh, I do have the final version here as what I'm calling final code. So if you wanna not have to worry about typing and correcting typos and stuff like that, then you can just follow along that way, whatever is good for you. But I'm going to give I'm going to try my hand of writing it from scratch so you can see that it actually works. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn my attention here and uh, we'll get started. So uh, as you can see, I've got a public class stooge driver. I've got the main method inside and I like to mark the ending of these things. I find putting markers at the end of big containers actually helps uh, keep ki kids on task. But that's just something I like to do. And we're going to get started by coming in with an import. Uh, actually not. I'm going to come in here first, however, and I'm going to say scanner input equal new scanner system dot in. Now you might recognize that's going to let me interact with the keyboard. Now, sometimes I'll put this in and save and run. And I do that sometimes deliberately making mistakes just so kids will get used to seeing what the errors look like when they make mistakes, which we all do. And so, of course, it's griping that it doesn't know about this library. And we're going to need several libraries today. So we could go in and type them all in, but uh, you might know this shortcut. I could come in and go import, um, what is it, java.util.scanner. And when I do so and save and run, my error message goes away, I hope. Okay, yeah, it did. Uh, but now, if you have lots of stuff that you need to import, uh, I kind of like kids to know where things come from, but sometimes if we've been doing this for a while, I'll actually come in with kind of a wild card and I'll go import java.util.star. And that of course brings everything in, but the kitchen sink. Uh, and that way, if we need other things, we don't have to worry about bringing them in. And you may be aware if you've done array lists that if I'm gonna be using scanners to input stuff, I'm gonna need the utility stuff to bring in array lists and some other goodness that we're gonna be needing in a moment. So that's a little shortcut that I'll often introduce down the road to the students. And you might already know that. But anyway, that's something I like to do. Now, the another thing I like to do, I'm going to put, come in here and say system.out.println. I like to put what I call a little header in there. And uh, it's going to say something like uh, primitive arrays. Now, that's what I call arrays that are not tied to a class. And I like to put something like this in there at the beginning, just so I can see that something worked, okay? Okay, there we go, something worked. We're talking about primitive arrays. So later, when I'm uh, having the code run and getting output, I like them to paste a copy of their output at the bottom of their source code so I can see what happened with them. And this kind of gives me a way of kind of following what they're doing. So away we go. So the topic here is, um, arrays and array lists. We're gonna start with an array. So I'm gonna go with an array declaration. I declaration. I like to put some comments in there. And uh, so I'm gonna introduce you. If you don't know about this already, you're in for a treat. We're gonna be talking about the three stooges today. And I, I hope that you know about that. I hope you've got that kind of culture, but if you don't, I'm gonna culturalize you a little bit today. So we're gonna create a, an array called stooges square brace. 
And then we're going to come equal to equal to new string square brace semicolon. And I'm going to put a little comment on there that says that this is a fixed size. Okay, and that's kind of the hallmark of a regular old array. I teach students that an array is kind of like an old timey motel. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Hopefully there's no errors with what I've got going on and nothing's happening yet. But um, what I'll often do is I'll, whoops, did I do something wrong here? New string. Oh, what did I do wrong? New string what? What happened? I didn't tell it how big it needed to be, right? So if you're talking about this as being like a motel, the thing about a motel is that you need to know ahead of time how many rooms you've got. Well, we've only got three rooms. So hopefully this time save and I run and hopefully nothing bad happens. Now, I will often talk to kids about what I call code vandalism, meaning I'll deliberately make mistakes, see what happens so that when I get some horrible error message, it's like, oh, okay, I've seen that before. And sometimes I'll actually vandalize the code and make sure that, um, you know, they, they see plenty of mistakes that they then have to go and correct. But I teach the students that an array is like a motel. And I've got a picture from a slide show that I often will give. So I created this thing with uh, Photoshop. I found an old time motel, uh, kind of looks dingy and drab, and it's called the Java Motel. And I think about it as a structure of individualized rooms. So they've got room numbers. And of course, our rumors begin with zero. And so we're going to check some people into that hotel. So I've got a fixed size hotel. It's got three rooms and I'm going to come in here. And one of the, one of the things I do early on too, is I, as I make something, I'm often curious what happens if I print it out. So I'm going to go system dot out dot print line stooges. So I'm curious Am I going to get an error? I created a what we would call a data structure. I'm curious what will happen. Maybe there'll be an error. Maybe something mysterious will happen. I don't know. I'm going to save and run. And in fact, voila. Okay. So um, I teach the students, okay, this actually isn't a bad thing. It looks weird, but it's looking like we're getting some kind of memory address. So just like a motel or a hotel would have a location, this is a location in RAM that's uh, a single entity, but it's got multiple rooms. And that's kind of why we like data structures so much. So nothing bad happens, so that's good. And so uh, I'm gonna come in also, and I would like to know just how big this thing is. So one of the first things, of course, is we'd like to talk about attributes of an array. That is things that make the array or describe the array to us. And of course the hallmark is the size. So I'm gonna come in and say, can I get that size? So system dot out dot print line. And I like to put some little uh, descriptions in there. The length of the Stooges array equal. And then, of course, concatenation. And so uh, we say, okay, stooges dot length. And we wonder, is it really got root three, three rooms? We said that it was supposed to. Let's see if it does. And so run and hopefully it doesn't break. And there we go. Okay. Now, one thing that's kind of a comparison contrast. We're dealing with primitive arrays, all right? So they don't have what I call superpowers. They don't have specialized methods that necessarily interact with them. Array lists, in fact, do. So when I come in here, I like to show them that this is actually an attribute, that it's a fixed value. It doesn't need any kind of superpower to tell it how big it is. If I come in and try to put a parenthesis on it, meaning I'm using a length method on that array, I wonder what the error message will look like or if it will give an error message. And in fact, notice it's saying, it says ugliness, uh, cannot find symbol. So it's saying, I just don't recognize what you're doing. I don't see a method affiliated with this kind of data structure. So I say, okay, I'm so sorry. You're just a regular old noun, right? That describes information. You're not a verb. And so now let's save and make sure it's fixed now. So I've got three rooms. And if that's the case, okay, we've got room for the three stooges. All right. So we want to start filling this. So we've declared it already. Now we're going to say stooges and the square brace is the magic uh, symbology to access the rooms. So this is the motel 
it's got a room number. And then since it's a motel, guess who we're going to check in first? We're going to check in the most famous of the three stooges, Mo. All right. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, follow the little link up here and watch a movie clip of the three stooges, but not when I'm teaching afterwards. So if I come in here and try to pick Mo in there, and I'm going to come in while I've got it, I'm going to say stooges, oops, stooges, square brace one is Larry, another famous stooge that was in the comedy troupe all these years. And see, in my cat classes, I give them culture. They learn all about Lost in Space and the Three Stooges and all sorts of stuff. And they love it, let me tell you. And so now we go with stooges. And of course, now the third stooge, oh, you see what I nearly did? I typed a three, but it's not really three, it's what? It's two because of zero based indexing. There are three containers, but we start at zero, at zero. So there are three critters. Now, my favorite third stooge is Curly. And of course we could keep filling up stooges or could we? I'm curious what's gonna happen. Um, what if I got ambitious and wanted to add the one of the fourth stooges? Uh, there was a stooge that replaced Curly at times. And so anybody know his name? Brownie points if you do. Shemp, did you get that? But some of you are nervous because you know what's going to happen when I try this. When I go save and run, of course, the disaster befalls us, right? Because primitive arrays are fixed size. There are three stooges in any given moment, but one replaced the other at times. And Shemp was a replacement for Curly at one point, and we can't put him in there because uh, we don't have room for him. A primitive array is fixed size. So Sorry, Shemp, we're not ready for you just yet. Now, if you'll notice, it says uh, we've got this ugly message. Now, when the students get these ugly messages, sometimes what I'll do is I'll copy that message, Control C, and I'll actually come in and put it as a comment so they know, oops, that's not what I expected. Uh, not Control C, I've got to right mouse click and copy. It's weird over there. It doesn't like Control C, so copy that way. Let's put it in this time. Hopefully it works. Oh, there we go. So there's just saying it's a right index bound of bounds. So basically, hey, we only have so much size in our motel and you exceeded the size, won't let you do that. So I'm going to comment out the offending thing. Now I'm thinking that I've got everybody checked in the motel, but it would be really nice to see is Mo, Larry and Curly really in the hotel? So being fancy, we've learned about loops already. Let's go in and see if we could iterate through this array and see just how many, or see the stooges, et cetera. So I'm gonna say for int, so integer, and I use a phonetic thing, index equals zero, uh, semicolon, index less than stooges dot what? Now you remember, we've been looking at attributes dot, Link, thank you. No parentheses, semicolon, and then index plus plus. And I use that phonetically index. I think of the index as the room number over the motel. And so, as you know, I'm going to come in and say system.out.println. And um, I like to sometimes dress it up and actually put the room numbers there. I think in the interest of time, I'm just going to not do that. I'm going to say it's in the final, but I'm just going to say the name of the hotel or the motel square brace, what? In the X. So now, and uh, this is a little bit overkill, but sometimes I'll actually have them mark the end of a loop. If, if the structure gets really nuts, I'll put that in there just to help them see where things begin and end. And I do that a lot in Python, by the way. But so let's see, did we really get stooges checked in the motel? Can we see them? Uh, maybe the loop will reveal that. And so we've already done some looping stuff. And oh, look, there's Molaire and Curly. Great. They're checked in the motel. It's great. We couldn't put Shimp in it because we don't have room for them. But we'll get to Shimp in a, just a few minutes. But um, that's one way of doing, of course, iterating through or trans, just going hopping from room to room, knocking on the door of the motel, seeing who's there, 
But as you know, there might be another way of doing that. So the students at this point have already seen the other way of doing loops, which is of course, for string S for stooge and string in the stooges array. And I could actually make this a one liner. Um, sometimes I'll do that. So system dot out dot print line. And this would be another way of doing it. So the, of course, the benefit with this kind of loop, I'll remind the students is that the other kind of loops, you need to know the index. Here, we don't care about the index. We don't care about the room number the, mo the stooges are in. We care about the stooges themselves. So if I run it this time and save and run, of course, we should see basically the same thing, Mo Larry Curly and Mo Larry Curly. So a couple of ways of transversing an array. And um, so life is wonderful. Now, hey, Ken, before yes, you keep going, yes. um, do you think we could maybe see if we could increase the size of the output? Sure. Uh, let's see. That's under. If, yeah, under settings. And uh, output, right? Thank you, Leah. I didn't even think about that. No problem. That's why you get paid the big bucks. I'm thinking that's <laughs> going to do it, right? Perfect. Love okay. it. Okay, Leah, thank, thank you. you for saying that. I appreciate it. Okay, that's a little bit better now. Thank you. I should have thought of that. Thank you. All right. So I've iterated through my primitive array. Now, you might wonder, um, this is kind of clunky. If if you're going to use a new command to get a, a primitive array, you've got to predetermine the size. Is there another way without having to use these nasty square braces? And so there's another technique called an initializer list. Now, you may have encountered the initializer list in the past, but it's a way, particularly if you've got a short number of entries, that you can um, create another primitive without using the new whatever. And I'm going to use this with my other set of favorite characters. So I'm going to go string. And it's I'm going to call it square brace. Scooby gang. Equal curly brace. And now the curly brace is a delimiter that's going to let me put in my friends Fred and Velma. Let's see. And Shaggy. And Scooby. Okay. And I oh, can't, can't forget Daphne. And I'm going to wrap it up. Oh, yeah, we've got everybody. Okay. So, so now this is another way of creating an array, a primitive array. Rather than using new with a, spe a special number saying how many rooms, I can use a curly brace delimiter and stick the values inside. Now, you would not want to do this with a lot, but for a short number of things, I'm calling it Scooby Gang. That's great. Notice I'm saying that this is string in nature. And earlier, you might have noticed I said string, stooges, square brace. I like to put the square brace delimiter on primitives after the identifier, that's just me, but you can put it after the data type as well. And I show the kids that you can have it either way. So now if this is true, if I've created it and it's correct, I shouldn't have any kind of error. Let's see, hopefully, okay. Now nothing happened, but I didn't do anything with that information yet. So what I could do is I'm gonna cheat my little quick and dirty print loop for the Three Stooges, control C. Let's see if we really check the Scooby gang in. So it's no longer string S, I guess it could be. Uh, I can, I'm gonna say G for gang. And then not the Stooges array, but what? Scooby gang, system dot 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 print line G. And so hopefully now I'll see the Scooby gang listed out as well. All right, so yeah, this is no big deal. So life is wonderful and things are working great. Okay. All right, so I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, so think about what we've got. We've got two ways of creating an array, a uh, primitive array. Of course, we're using strings. We could use ints or doubles, anything that we like. We can access the size with the length attribute, not a method, but an attribute. And we can hardwire our values in using square braces. We can iterate through and print stuff out either using a traditional for loop or the next, the for next type loop. 
And then we can use an initializer list and we're good to go. So that's kind of what I want to say about arrays for now. We'll come back to them in a moment. What we now want to talk about the other aspect of our talk today, which is good old array list. So I'm going to copy my earlier heading, control C, and I'm going to come down here, control V. And now these are not primitive arrays. Now these are now array lists. Now, if you do Python, Python lists, they're called lists in Python, makes me nuts. They should call them arrays, but you know, what do I know? Um, Python lists act a lot like array lists, but um, in Java, of course, they make a distinction between array lists and primitive arrays. So we've got this, and I tell the kids that array lists are kind of like primitive arrays on steroids, and they've got superpowers, meaning that there are methods affiliated with array lists that give us extra power. And so why anybody would ever use a primitive is beyond me, actually, but uh, unless you want to pass the AP test. But um, so anyway, here we are with array lists. And so now let's go in and do the same kind of thing. Earlier, we declared a primitive array. Let's declare a, an array list. And so it looks slightly different. So I'm going to go array list, which is capital A, capital L, whoops, array list. Now you have to mention the data type. It's going to be string in nature. My identifier in this case is going to be morons. Now the three stooges were often called morons. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch some three stooges, okay? But anyway, array list string morons equal. And now here's what's uh, new, new array list. And it looks kind of creepy. I've just got to mention the array list string but now it's got a parentheses semicolon. Now notice no size. It's using a constructor. Now, if you've already done the classes unit, they should recognize, oh, this kind of looks like a footprint with a constructor. It's got a new, it's got the name of the class. It's got this weird thing with the curly braces, which and with the angle braces with basically data type. But uh, you might be wondering, oh, wait, he didn't, in, he didn't import array list. It's going to crash. But Oh, we did do the java.util.star. If I didn't do that, I'd have to say import java.util.array list. So this is going to be fine. So if everything's fine, if I go save and run, and I often do this regularly to make sure I'm not having bad things happen. Okay, array list. And you can see why I look like to put these little, I call them breadcrumb statements, kind of like this is where you are. It's like you go in the mall, here you are. So, oh, I'm an array list, great. Well, nothing bad happened. So it must have created a morons array list, whatever that is. Now let's add to the morons array, array list. Now, what's interesting, earlier I did a system.out.println of stooges. Well, let's be symmetrical and let's do the same thing for morons. So if I come in and say morons, um, now you might think, well, is that going to give us a um, memory address? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Oh look, it didn't give us an it didn't give us a address. If we want an address, we might have to do something else. It gave us a square brace that's empty because we haven't put any morons in there yet. So I like them to see that that's one fundamental way that arrays and array lists are different. So we're going to add some morons. So doesn't that sound exciting? So I'm going to do the following. Now, I tell I have lots of gimmicky sayings in my class. You probably figured this out by now. Um, I'll say, write the container, fill the container. So I like to write a structure. Now, don't panic. I know that this is a do loop, and that's not on the AP subset. And I say, get over it. They really ought to know about do loops. And so I've got a do loop and you might say, well, you don't have a conclusion on there yet. Yes, I know. And this is going to terrify you. I'm going to say do well, true. And so, and I'll tell them, they'll type it, they'll run it, and then they'll crash their program. I'll say, yeah, you should realize this was an infinite loop. And so uh, we've talked about this previously with do walls and I did write an infinite loop. So well, I, want, I will often come in here and remind them now, I use a little thing that they use as a buzzword. You're going to think I'm just ridiculous, but WD, uh, DWR, exclamation point, and they know that means 
danger will robinson they know this is about to electrocute you all right so this is could be an infinite loop so if we're going to have a loop we're going to have to have a way of bailing out of it so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be asking them for stooges so i'm going to give a prompt system dot out dot print enter a stooge and I'm going to have a Q for quit, but I'm going to do a little bit less typing. And we're going to just remember that Q will quit. And I'm going to say string a stooge equal input dot next line. It's a string. This is handy dandy scanner work going on here. And then I'm going to say if a stooge double equal Q If a stooge double equal Q, we're going to break. Otherwise, else, we're going to say morons dot add a stooge. And let's kind of back off and see what we're doing here. So I've got a do loop. I'm going to keep asking them forever about their stooges. I'm going to prompt them for a stooge. I'm going to use the input scanner to get me a stooge. And then I'm going to check to see if they put in a queue. And if they did, we're going to break, which gets me out of dodge. Otherwise, we're going to. Now, this is what's new about uh, array list. They've got superpowers. One of the methods affiliated with an array list is the add method, which lets me add something to the empty motel, checking them in. Now, I know what you're thinking. He doesn't know what he's talking about because I see a horrible, horrible mistake that he made on line 43. Do you see it? Because my students do this all the time and I bet yours do too. What did I do wrong? Oh, strings, we do not use double equal to compare strings. We do not, we do not. So if I had the time, I would go and show you the horrors that happened, but uh, you were nervous that I didn't know that, weren't you? But um, I am a moron, but uh, not that bad. So. We're going to remind them we do not use double equals. We use a method dot equals and give it a parameter Q. And I know that we should worry about upper, upper and lower case. We're not going to, but um, so I'm going to save. And so when I run now and run, I'm going to get this previous mess. Oh, look, I had an empty mo tell and i can enter my own stooges so i'm going to put in mo and larry and curly and i can keep going so now there's room for shemp oh we can put in shemp okay but uh let's we can keep going there was another they they had some problems and people died and then they had a curly joe who wasn't as good as curly and then they had a Sam. Actually, they didn't. Uh, so we've got a errant stooge in there. And I could keep going. Now, I'm in an infinite loop now, friends. And you guys don't have time for this. So I can bail. I can go Q. Oh. Now, I don't know whether it's still in an infinite loop or whether um, you know it did end. And notice I have nothing at the bottom of my loop. So perhaps I ought to use my little a uh, fancy pants way of printing out stuff. So I'm gonna go control C of the Scooby gang thing and see if the actual prints this out. And so string M for morons and the name of the data type. Notice I can use the same thing, whether I'm an array or an array list morons. And I wanna go M and so save. Now this is hassle cause I've got to type them all out again, but. Um, maybe this will help you remember the three stooges. Okay. No, so nothing else uh, you get that out of today. So Mo, Larry, Curly, uh, Shemp, cannot forget Shemp. And then Curly Joe, who actually was a stooge at one point, he wasn't that good. And then Sam, who is not a stooge. Now watch what happens. Oh, wait, got to quit, got to quit. Okay. There they are. And I could have kept going and going and going. So that's a couple of neat things about array lists. You use a constructor to make an array list, having specified a data type. You, when you print it out, it will print out the listing. 
So actually, um, I wish I'd thought to do this show that it would print it out in square braces. I'm not going to bore you with that, but I've got a little do loop that's infinite, but I have a break and I could put in as many stooges as I want. And that's just lovely and wonderful. Okay, now, some other things that you can do are with an array list. Um, looking at my notes here, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I am going to go ahead and copy that loop, that command where I said system.out.morons, control C. I do want to show that that's a convenient way just to see what's in there. If you don't want to write a loop to go through it, that's a, a, yet another reason why it's nice to use these things. Now, you, if you looking at my output, you'll notice that I did have Sam in there. Oh, we don't want to include Sam. So we're going to get rid of Sam. And that's another thing uh, that we can do is I could come in and say, I can remove things very easily. So I'm going to come in and say string bad stooge equal Now, so in the ArrayList ecosystem, many superpowers, the add method, the remove method, the size method, and we'll see some other ones here in a moment. But um, now I don't know if you're seeing this. It said something about my internet connection. That was disturbing. Hopefully it's okay. Um, Morons.remove. Now I want to get the last one. Now, this is a little bit of a hassle. If I'm gonna get the last one, I have the kids count on fingers and toes, all right? If I've got three, zero, one, two, so that's the size. I mean, wait, the size is three, so I need to get one less than that. So if I want the last one, I've gotta say morons dot. Now it's not length, it's not a length. This is a superpower, so it needs a method. And what did they use? Not length, but size. Why they did that, I don't know minus one, and that's, if that's disturbing to students, just have them count. How many stooges? There's three of them. What's the last room? Zero, one, two. How do you get it? The size minus one. And what I'm gonna be removing is the bad stooge, and I'm gonna print out system dot out dot print line, bad stooge equal plus bad stooge. So this gives me an opportunity. I entered in someone that wasn't a stooge earlier. Is this going to let me remove them? I hope so. Um, let me see if there's anything else I want to do. Oh, before I do this again, I'm going to copy my printout statement. Now I call these printout statements breadcrumbs to my students. I like to use lots of breadcrumbs. I like to print out what's happening so they can see what's happening in real time. It makes uh, the auto grader nuts when I do this, okay? In fact, by the way, I call the auto grader in Code HS, I call her Roz from monsters.inc. Uh, watch monsters.inc and you'll see why I call her Roz, okay? But uh, anyway, so system.out.println always watching, right? So system.out.println morons, uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, let's see if this is gonna remove. So save, run. So now if you'll indulge me here, um, inner stooge, Mo, Larry, Curly, Curly Joe. Oh no, Shamp, Curly Joe and Sam quit. Oh, look, there they all are. The bad stooge was S. So the remove method doesn't just remove, it returns to something that was removed. And so the last S for Sam, I should have used a different letter. Uh, not Shemp, but Sam was actually removed. My breadcrumbs telling me that. That's great. We love you, remove method. Um, so there we go. Now, um, now, let me see how smart you are. I wish I could say I was this smart. I discovered this when I was getting ready today because I crashed my program. Because we should always get to thinking, all right, what if some moron doesn't give us any stooges at all? What if they say cue to quit and never give us any stooges? That would be a disaster. You know why? Because when I come in here and try to remove something that's at negative one, it crashes. So we really ought to have this thing put in some kind of if else block. And I think I did that in the final. Did I do that? I might not have. Let's see. I'm showing you the final here. Uh, let's see. 
I don't think I fixed it. So if you want something entertaining, you haven't seen anything entertaining today. So if you want something entertaining, you can fix this yourself. But I'm not going to torture you with that. Uh, let's get to the last thing that I think is pretty powerful, um, which is what you can do as far as sorting things with either arrays or array lists. So let's see. Um, let's look first. I'm going to go system dot out dot print line. I'm going to put a breadcrumb so I kind of know what's happening. Quote and backslash in equal 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 sorting equal 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 and uh, curly brace. So putting things in order. Now um, I don't know where you are with code HS these days, but there's you know insertion sort and selection sort and bubble sort and all sorts of sorting stuff. And uh, sometimes it would just be so nice if you could do this without any work. And I don't think this is in the AP subset, but I do it anyway, because I'm just that kind of person. Um, so if you've not seen this, this is so cool. Uh, there's the arrays class dot sort Scooby gang. Now you have to think, now was Scooby Gang a primitive or was Scooby Gang an array list? Well, Scooby Gang was a hardwired initialized list that's primitive. So my conjecture is that the arrays method, I'm sorry, the arrays class has a superpower sort that if you give it a primitive, it will sort it. Now you have to wonder, okay, do you have to assign it to something or does it happen automatically? Well, the only way we'll know is if we take that printout statement control C about the Scooby gang and paste it in. And uh, if I were in class, I'd say, well, what do you think is going to happen students? You know, um, but um, being professionals, you already know. Um, so I come in here and let's see. Um, come on, go, go, go. Um, all right. Inner stage A, Q to quit. Okay. Uh, oh, look. Sorting, Daphne, Fred, Scooby, Shaggy, Velma. Oh my gosh, one line sorts a primitive, All right? Now, could I be so lucky that that would happen with array lists? So I'm curious, let's copy that, control C. Let's come in here. Maybe it's my lucky day. Maybe I can sort my morons in the same fashion morons what do you think is it going to work it would be so lovely if it works <laughs> a train wreck can you see this it's just i call it digital vomit it's just awful why why did they give it that attribute, that ability i don't know so um you know what i'm going to put there right you know i'm going to come in and say danger will robinson does not work for a L for array lists, all right? So if we wanna do it, we're gonna to have to do it another way. So enter another method or another uh, class or another uh, class of superpowers called collections. Collections dot sort morons. Now, as if we didn't have enough to keep up with, you mean you're going to make me remember two stinking different ways of doing this? Yes, I am. Um, well, let's see if it works. Let's print out the morons. Is it going to? Is it going to sort them? Let's see. Hopefully, I don't get that atrocious digital vomit. Okay. Well, the digital vomit went away. Now I'm going to have to type them in. Mo, Larry, Curly, Fred. Q to quit and curly larry mo oh i love you collections class so let's put a little note collections are used to sort array lists now had i been in charge we would have had only one way of doing it oh well um that's why we get paid the big bucks, I guess, to keep track of all this. So, so now what would be super neat? I have an, I have an array list. I'd like to maybe use the arrays. 
Will array lists let me convert them to primitive arrays? I wonder. I wonder if that's a possibility. So um, let's see. Let's come in here and let's give that a try. So I'm going to put a little breadcrumb here. Because what I like to do with the students is I like to show them every possibility. Okay, if you have an array, what can you do? If you have an array list, what can you do? Can you convert an array list to an array? Oh, yes, you can. If you can do that, what can you now do, et cetera? So it's like lots of contortions, right? So in this one right here, we're going to say primitives. from array lists, all right? So given an array list, I'm wondering, can I get a primitive out of it, all right? So let's see, so I'm gonna, now this is the thing that's kind of kind of crazy, it's kind of weird. You're not gonna like it, okay? Uh, in fact, you're going to object. Object. Object, goofballs, square brace, equal morons dot to array parentheses semicolon. Now this is something that I just think is so cool. If you remember array lists, we had created the morons group. There's another method in the array list ecosystem called to array. The to array is a method, notice the parentheses, and it will let me convert the silly thing to a primitive, but now look what it does. And this is a great way if the students have not yet understood or gotten in their head the idea of the super class of object, this might be a good way of showcasing this. Because notice morons was a string data structure, but there's nothing here that tells this how to make it a string primitive. So what's it gonna use? It could have been integer, it could have been double, it could have been car, it could have been Boolean. How do we know? Oh, we don't know. So what we'll do is we'll make it the super duper class because everything is an object. So therefore, I'm not gonna have an array of strings. I'm not gonna have an array of ints or doubles or, or cars. I'm gonna have an array of objects. And so some students have already heard of this, some others haven't and they wonder what I'm talking about, but let's just see if this works. So I'm gonna say if parenthesis goofballs uh, dot length. Now, oh, notice we've gone away from the dot length or the method idea back to attributes again. So if goofballs dot length bigger than zero. Now I'm learning my lesson from the danger Will Robinson moment where I have something that didn't have the right size, all right? So it says, so if the goofballs.length is bigger than zero, I'm going to say for object G in goofballs. System dot out dot print line um, G. Okay, else. Um, system dot out dot print line uh, what am I going to say here uh, a breadcrumb we had no morons to make into goofballs because I didn't want to see my computer crash again now you might be wondering or worried about this well wait a minute now if you've got an array, well, now we got a problem on our hands. They were strings when we created them. Now they're objects. So if we have to, if we want to perceive them as strings, we may have to do some ugly either casting or using some instance of stuff, which we may have to pursue another time. Let's just see if we can see our goofballs. Now remember, what are goofballs? Goofballs are the uh, primitive arrayed uh, transformation of morons into a primitive array, but now they're being perceived as objects to preserve data types. So let's see if it all works before I get all excited. 
because it might just crash. Let's see. Okay, inner stooge, I'm going to have to, I know you're getting tired of this, but you will never forget their names. Mo, Larry, Curly, Shemp, Fred. It's not a, not a stooge. Inner stooge, Q to quit. Oh, look, there's my primitives from my array list. Now you might be quibbling. Oh, but are they strings? Well, wouldn't you like to know? We'll have to worry about that another time. Um, now, now think about what we were doing here. We're here, we're getting primitives from arrays, right? I mean, primitives from array list. Can we invert it? Could we get an array list from primitives? Wouldn't it be super nice if there were such a function? Well, kiddies, I hate to tell you that I don't think they thought of that. So can we? Yes but we have to write it ourselves. Now I'm looking at the clock and I wanna make sure we've got time to wrap things up, but I'm gonna go ahead and just take you, spoiler alert, I'm gonna take you to the final and let's go down and see what we see there. So hopefully now you see my final thing here and it says, can we get an array list from primitives? And at first I thought, N -n -n well, try it on your own. And I thought, no, and I just felt so guilty not giving it to you. So here it is. Actually, you can, but you create your own method. So, okay, I'm going to create an array list of strings called mystery gang list, which is coming from the method create AL from array list from Scooby gang. Now, Scooby gang was a primitive, right? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, was a primitive. And then I printed out, make sure it works. Now, it's so nice. Look what we do. We can simply say, there's our method, it's public, it's static, it's not affiliated with an object. It's gonna receive an array list or return an array list of strings. There's its name, it's receiving as input, the parameter is string ARR square brace. So it's a primitive array. So I'm going to create a uh, empty array list, AL, AL, iterate through the primitive array, adding the string to the, to the array list and then return the array list. And then we can test it, it will work. I did test it out. Uh, and incidentally, uh, I like to show the students um, or I will have the students paste their output for me at the bottom of the program. So if I'm in a hurry, I can just look and see what they got. And so this is kind of a transcript of what we've been doing. And the nice thing about putting the breadcrumbs in there is that if you have multiple runs and you know they start with primitive arrays, you can see, okay, this kid did four or five runs and there's the results. And I actually showed, see, I'm honest with my, I'm honest with you. I actually showed where this silly thing crashed when I created no stooges and tried to remove a stooge. Look at the ugly mess, okay? Uh, and I actually like to set kids up to make that mistake. So hopefully they won't make it when the time when it really matters. But I see we've only got about five minutes left. I've had a blast. This has been so much fun. Of course, I can entertain myself uh, I, very easily. I hope it's been some meaning to you. Keep in mind, I use this as an introduction to arrays and array lists because they've already kind of seen the ideas. You could use this as a way of comparing and contrasting at the end of those units. Actually, once you've covered the sorting stuff and the array list unit with code HS, then you could also show these additional ways of sorting and things of that nature. But I found this works well for me. Hopefully it works well for you. Thank you for your time. I know you guys are busy and it's just so nice that you were here today and I appreciate it so much. And Lori, I'm going to turn it back to you. Ken, thank you. Um, that was awesome. I have to say it's, I, I don't often come to, a Java workshop where I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm learning so many things and I am laughing. I am entertained. This was a lot of fun. Just oh, really, you. really enjoyed this. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I did drop a quick link into chat. Um, and if you could just take a moment and fill out our survey, codehs.com slash workshop survey, that would be great. 
Um, we did record this, and so we will be sending out a follow-up to everybody who's registered. Uh, this will be available for you to view, and I'll make sure I send out all of Kent's links and uh, his sandbox links. Um, if you were following along or typing along, one thing to make note of with the sandbox is you will need to fork a copy um, if you want a copy of the code. So make sure you click that fork link. And if you have any trouble, just drop me an email. Um, and by the way, my email, I think you should all have it because I sent you out uh, an email about it. So uh, let us know if you have any questions. Um, Kent, this was wonderful. Thank you so much again. Thank you, everybody. Um, we do have one other thing that I just happened to think of. We have a few other workshops out on our uh, uh, workshop page. I'm totally forgetting everything right now. Um, but if you browse out to codehs.com slash free PD, um, you're going to see a lot of other workshops listed there. Don't hesitate to register for more. Um, I'll be trying to talk Kent into doing a few more for us. So I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll nudge him that way. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see some more listed soon and we will have a ton of other workshops coming up for you very soon as well. So keep an eye on that page. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Um, and if you'd like to let us know how you've, uh, how you've used the, uh, uh, used this program with your class, we'd love to hear it. So, all right. Thank you so much. And doesn't look like we have questions. Oh yeah, tic-tac-toe in Java or Python. Yes, that is Gary Vanderlinden. He's another one of our um, amazing uh, teacher trainers and Java teachers as well. Um, that's a pretty, pretty cool program. I've been playing with it in both Java and Python. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to sign up for Gary's as well. I think you'll really love it. Excellent. All right. Perfect. Yeah, the we have some that Mark just mentioned too in chat. There's a P5JS one coming up on the 9th. Um, we have a few teacher trainers who are doing some P5JS uh, type of projects. And Portia Morell has done a lot with P5JS in terms of customizing uh, projects, doing her own auto graders, tremendous amount of stuff. Um, she she actually has another one that is not published on the site yet, but it'll be in April as well. So I know that one's coming up soon. Maybe a little sneak peek at that. Yes, uh, thanks. Yeah, lots of thank yous, Ken. You, seriously, this was wonderful. I was absolutely entertained from start to finish. And I gotta, I gotta sit in on a class someday. I wanna see all of your kids interact with you because this was awesome. Just loved it. So, all right, everybody. Thank you so much. Again, take a moment to fill out that workshop survey. I'll send out a follow-up email probably by end of day tomorrow. It'll take you just a little bit to process the video, uh, but I'll get that out to all of you. Don't hesitate to reach out if you've got any questions. Uh, you'll have my email address there, lori at codehs.com. I'll go ahead and drop that into chat just in case you need it. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, wherever you're joining us from. Thank you.